Boo. Did I scare you? Hi, my name is Haley, also known as Someday Knits here on the internet, and this is my channel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, feel free to cuss me out in the comment section below for how long I have been gone. But I'm back now, and I will do better. I say this every time. I know, call me out on it. It's okay. But I do want to finish out the year strong, so I thought top of the fourth quarter i need to come back i need to get a podcast episode out and i need to kind of set a baseline for how i want to finish off this year and start the next year as far as my crafting goes i don't really have much i can give you as far as why i've been gone uh what had happened was i actually got an opportunity to sample knit for brooklyn tweed um, if you're unfamiliar with sample knitting, it's basically when a company a designer xyz pays you to knit something so Oftentimes these projects don't have any type of creativity involved. So they sent me the pattern, they sent me what size they wanted. It was this like striped cardigan. They sent me the yarn they wanted it knit in and they even sent me the order of the colors, like the way they wanted the stripes to go. So it's very robotic, I guess. There's a lot of people in places looking for sample knitters. I just kind of googled it and that's how I ended up landing this, I wouldn't even call it a job, it's more like a little gig. You don't get paid much. You don't get paid much. So blah blah blah, I got this opportunity and I wasn't allowed to post about it because they wanted me to knit this for an upcoming photo shoot for a new line of colors that they were going to release in one of their yarns. So I kind of got in the habit of knitting off of the internet and I had a tight deadline on which they needed this shit backed like steamed blocked ready to go for photography. And then once I stopped posting, I just kind of never started again. I just got in a rhythm, my son started school, we did a lot of traveling, I was kind of all over the place. Yeah, that's all I can say about it really. It's kind of like when I have a super strong like exercise routine going and then I go on vacation or something comes up to where I can't get to the gym and it's like so much harder to get back into the routine than it is to stay in the routine. So unfortunately I did fall off, I did. But I'm hoping to end off the year strong in these last three months and kind of get the content rolling again. So I say all that to say thank you so much for joining me today and let's get into it. I do have a couple of things to show for my absence and by a couple I mean two. Okay, a couple. I have two finished objects and then the rest are whips and acquisitions and kind of like a setup for um, projects that I want to finish before the year ends and projects that I will not finish. So to start it off, Haley, your ends aren't woven. How is this a finished object? Cause it is, cause it is, okay? This is a swimsuit cover up. I have strings dangling from it everywhere, but we're not talking about that right now, okay? I crocheted this. It is a row of half double crochet followed by a row of quadruple crochet. So it's super cute, um, like I said, I have not woven in the ends, I will eventually, I do think I want to make the neckline just a little bit shorter, like maybe slip stitch them to the next row of quadruple, and leave it at that, but we'll see, I'm not too sure, I do like it a lot, I've worn it. I've washed it and dried it with these ends out, so actually maybe I never will weave them in. Who knows? Not me. And my next finished object, I'm so excited for it. I finished it just in time for the fall slash winter because she's kind of a thicky, a little thickums. It is my zipper sweater by Petite Knit. I finally made one. I feel like this is like an internet knitter's rite of passage almost. I feel like at some point in your career you have to make a zipper sweater. And I did. She may look a little different because I've modified heavily. Eh, medium heavy. But I'll get into that in a second. She's made out of Drop Stacy held with Cardiff brush light on 5mm needles. So the Cardiff brush light, if you're unfamiliar, Cardiff is like a line of cashmere yarns. And it's their like 
mohair or cashmere cashmere version of mohair so it's a lace like a silk core with fluffy cashmere so that's how you get this halo so i am happy with the way that this feels but i will say if you haven't already noticed this fluff yarn picks up absolutely every single piece of lint like all these little like white flecks and it's black so all the whites show up super easy any like little dusty oh see look at that any little dusties just get stuck and you have to physically go in and pick them out so I'm kind of torn because for the price the cashmere is very expensive and for the price I don't know if I love how much stuff it picks up, but I do really, really love how it feels. I have tried it on. I haven't worn it out into the world because it's been too hot, but I have tried it on and it feels so amazing. It feels so good. It's exactly as cozy as I wanted it to be, but I just don't necessarily know if I would do it again or like recommend it. I do think if you're interested in the combination, maybe a lighter color and then it won't show up. It'll just kind of blend in or if there was like a heathered, gray i can't remember what um what colors of drops there is because you would need like a matching base or you won't get like the density so if there was like a heathered color of drops and then maybe a gray of the cardiff that would be really good i might need to make that actually that would be that would be really really good but let's get into the modifications so to start off if you're familiar with the pattern you probably already see the collar and you're wondering if I knit the men's or the women's. So I did knit the women's, which normally has twisted rib, but the men's does not and it looks exactly the same to me. So I just went ahead and took out the twisted rib and knit it regular. I'm just not the biggest fan of twisted rib. Maybe I'll get there one day in my journey, but that's just not today and it won't be tomorrow either most likely. So I knit it in regular rib and i did that for the sleeves and the body as well i just love how squishy regular rib is it's squishy it's chunky it's cozy and i find twisted rib is one no fun to knit and also a little more stiff and not as elastic it doesn't have as much snapback if that makes sense so that was probably one of the biggest modifications because if you were to just look at this and you knew your patterns, you would probably think that I knit the men's, but this is in fact the women's. So for anyone who does not know, this is the raglan line, this little line of stitches that kind of divides the body from the sleeve. The pattern is either written for one or two raglan stitches. I changed it to four. Say hi. It's just me, hubby here. Open eye and make the cut. Don't edit me out. If she edits me out, I'm gonna leave a comment on the video. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted a chunkier look. Uh, there's no functional difference. And then my last modification is my favorite. The edges of the zipper are knit one, pearl one. As you can see on both sides. And then this is a selvage stitch. So you're basically knitting the edges every other row and everything else you knit every row obviously and I believe that's standard so what I decided to do was to continue the purl stitch for one so as you can see I continued that one purl stitch all the way down the zipper and then I also continued the selvage stitch there's a couple reasons I did this. I just feel like the selvage looks so much better than when you're knitting stockinette flat and you like knit pearl, knit pearl that edge. I just don't love it. It could be the way that I knit, but I don't like it. So I did want to continue the selvage stitch. When you're knitting that selvage stitch, because you're working that edge stitch every other row, those stitches end up longer but the selvage stitch on regular stockinette so like one stitch to two stitches it makes these little holes and I didn't want that so I continued that purl stitch down because the purl stitches sit back and it, it kind of hides that so basically I really love the way it, it turned out I feel like it looks super crisp and clean and it 
almost like outlines the zipper. And the last modification, if you can even call it that, is on the inside. I did not sew down the zipper placket. It's sewed to the zipper, so you sew it to the zipper, but you're also supposed to sew the outer edge to the sweater. And I just don't love how everyone's sweaters have that like rectangle around the zipper. It wasn't my cup of tea. So I skipped that step. I left it how it was, and now the front looks super even. And I don't have that outer edge like that little rectangle and then it comes down to like here and you have the little line i didn't like that it wasn't it wasn't a part of my journey overall i would probably rate this pattern a 12 out of 10 i really loved it it knits up so fast on the five millimeter needles and a quarter zip is really just a wardrobe staple and to have one that you made yourself that looks like you bought it at a store is just you know don't be surprised if you see me come around with one in that heather gray combo though i have to go back and look at drops and see if there's a gray daisy but i think that would eat i think that would be superb and now i kind of want one anyways into the whips that's a problem for another day in this bag we have yeah not much this is the beginning of a toe up sock focus here she is, beauty, gorgeous. This is Mono Stel Uruguay. I forgot what the exact name of this yarn is, so I will have it in the description box below with the color name as well. But it's essentially their play on spin cycle, like that type of yarn that you see everywhere. However, this is Superwash. It was one of those things where I was traveling in New York and I went to Cleo's, which is in Brooklyn, and I love that yarn shop and I wanted to get something, but I didn't want to get like a sweaters quantity. And this is what I left with. This. And this is a project that I'm not too pressed to finish in 2024, but I would like to finish it in 2025. Next up, we have this. This is Eddie Bauer cotton i think it's called adventure cotton or adventurer cotton in this beigey color i think in a previous video i talked about how this beige is just not my beige so i don't want to wear it i've been turning it into these adorable little coasters and I like to just make little sets out of yarn that is either left over or I'm not using but I can't necessarily like return you know so that it just doesn't sit and then I make these little coaster sets and I put them up on my website so if you're interested in a little something a little project handmade thingy that you don't have to make yourself check those out on my website I would really appreciate it and I would love you forever in this beautiful pencil case that features not only a capacious interior with two slip pockets but also two exterior zipper pockets that can be found on my Amazon storefront. I have our next whip. This is another pair of socks. These, this is hand dyed yarn that I got in Gatlinburg that I have gotten stuck in this zipper. I have another set of socks, a set? No, I don't. I have one unfinished sock. This is hand dyed yarn that I got in Gatlinburg while I was traveling. She's gorgeous. It's a toe up German short row heel. Okay. With a little baby gusset. A little baby gusset right there. And that's about as exciting as she gets. I mean, all stockinette, very plain jean. She does have these colorful light bulb stitch markers so that I can mark how many rows I did on my foot. If you can't tell, socks are very hard for me to finish. They're just, they're just hard for me to finish. I have these on two, two millimeter circulars. I'm doing magic loop. I've done magic loop i've done dpns and i've done 
the Haya Haya flyers all on this one pair of sock. I just go through so many moods making socks because there's no untedious way to do it. Oh, I've also tried nine inch circulars. I despise those things. Those things are so annoying and they hurt my arms. But yeah, I just feel like there's no, there's no super fun way to do socks in my opinion. If you have any more suggestions, please let me know because I absolutely love wearing them. I love hand knit socks. I only have three pairs and I wish I had 47, but I don't because I have to make them and it's hard for me to make them. It's hard for me to find the motivation to make them, I should say, because they're actually very easy to knit. But I do want to finish this in 2024. I do. At least one of them. At least one sock before 2024. My last whip, I have a little more to show for her, I think. This is a June top light. I'm making this out of K&C knit and crochet. Um, hand dyed cotton. I, I don't I don't think that's the exact name, but you can get it at Joanne But this is another project. This is a tank top a summer tank top on 2.75 millimeter needles. Tell me if that sounds fun to you Okay Yeah, I thought it was gonna be so great. I thought maybe the uh, What is this called? The variegated aspect would like keep me interested watching the colors change and stuff like that but it ended up being like pretty much pink this is pretty much just pink and I think this is going to be another one of those moments where I make a variegated garment and I don't want to wear it because the variegation just looks like I made it you know what I mean and I did make it but I don't want to scream, I made this. You know? Is it just me? So definitely not a project I want to finish in 2024 because I wouldn't even be able to wear it in 2024. It's going to be too cold outside. So my last two whips, I don't know if I can fully call them that because all I've done is swatch for them. But I have done something. I have put some level of effort into them. So I'm going to include them in this section. The first is a hat um this is the broad street beanie this is a pattern i've created myself that i'm planning on releasing later this year hopefully before 2025 is out i made this little swatch because i can't decide if maybe i also want to have a heavier version so this is held double instead of single because I now have enough yarn to do that since I ended up with extra and it's only two skeins so there's not much I can really do with the extra besides this. So here's my swatch and I'm basically just in limbo about whether or not I want to do exact as is and have all these little arch points or if I maybe want to do a thicker version and not decrease quite the same. But I do really love the way these decreases look. I feel like it's kind of like the whole character of the hat. It's not a design you like see very often. I don't know. I just feel like they look really cool. And if I do the thicker version, I obviously wouldn't have like as many columns because the gauge is a lot wider. So I couldn't go as hard on the decreasing design. That's why I'm stuck. That's why I don't know what to do. And lastly, I have this. Isn't this gorgeous? This is my first piece of color work anything ever. That's a lie. That's a lie. I have done like one other swatch of very basic like how to do color work following a tutorial. You know what I mean? Nothing crazy. But. This is my first swatch with the intention of creating a full garment. And I am at a roadblock, like full wall. I don't know how to move forward. Here's what I have. This is Cardiff Cashmere Classic. Absolutely stunning. This color right here is called Jasper and it is the most beautiful, vibrant, warm, almost neon but not in the glowy way like i don't know this color just has so much life to it and i am absolutely obsessed 
this is where the issue comes in so the pattern i love the way these two colors came together i absolutely love even looking at it on camera right now from further back i'm just like this is stunning i really really love it however i did this swatch on three and 3.5 millimeter needles for it to look like this can you imagine an entire sweater on three and 3.5 And if I do the 4 and the 4.5 that the pattern calls for, it's just too airy. I've seen pieces done at like looser gauges and it's definitely wearable, but I just don't think I would love it. And for the cost of like a sweater's quantity, I need to love this. So the current challenge I face is do I want to size down my needles for this fabric? Or do I want to potentially hold the yarn double for a denser fabric and also world's most expensive sweater ever? Or do I want to find a different color work sweater pattern? And I just don't feel like that's much of a solution because all I would be doing is finding a sweater that was intended for the needle sizes I used here. And if I'm going to do that, I might as well just knit this sweater on these needle sizes. If you have any suggestions, please send them my way. I really am only here because I absolutely love this color. I love it so much. It's the most beautiful purple I've ever seen. Again, this is called Cardiff Cashmere Classic in the color Jasper. So if you look up this color and you're like, hey, I think I've seen this color before in xyz yarn send it my way because i'm not above just switching out the yarn completely but i do not want to lose this color i feel like this color is not that hard to find other places um this i have not found and i need it i need this in my wardrobe i mean just look at this it's so stunning and i will say just from like what my viewfinder looks like it's even deeper like it's a tad bit darker in person but it somehow just has that like pink it's almost like if you mixed an eggplant purple with a fluorescent hot pink and you mix those two colors together so it has like the energy of hot pink but it's eggplant Please help me. We're going to table that and move on to acquisitions, okay? As I mentioned earlier, I did some sample knitting for Brooklyn Tweed. On top of the cash, you also get some yarn and you get some patterns. So you are well compensated. It's just not like, don't expect a lot of money. But you are compensated. The sweater they wanted me to knit was made out of this imbue worsted. Here she is. She looks like this. So they sent me a bunch of this yarn to knit the cardigan for them and while I was knitting the cardigan I really just fell in love with this yarn. I'd never tried it before and I thought it was so great. It is American Merino wool. It's worsted weight and it's 5 ply 20.5 micron fine merino source dyed and spun in the US. Anyway, I thought for a worsted weight, it was really nice and dense without being too, too heavy. I love how fluffy it is. You can kind of tell from the ends right here. This is so squishy and the spin on it, like the twist on it is so bouncy and boingy. It's, it's really so much fun to knit with. Also, it's very soft for a non super wash wool. It's not quite as soft as Drops Daisy, but the other side of Drops Daisy is that it's so soft, that thing will pill if you're using it by itself. If you hold it with a, um, like a lace weight, a fluffier lace weight, you'll be fine. But if you use Drops Daisy by itself, that thing is going to pill before you're even finished with your project. It pills so fast. But it is super soft, so little fabric shaver, move on, you know? However, this has just enough bite to fight off the pilling without being too rustic i don't love i i'm not gonna say i hate it but i do not like rustic 
So this is a very happy medium. And I wouldn't even say I'm like meeting rustic in the middle on this one. This is still definitely way on the softer side. So I was just overall really impressed with it. I decided to go with the exact same yarn for my credit because you are allowed to pick whatever yarn you want. But I decided to go with the exact same thing because I really loved it. I got 12 of these in the crepe. And then I also got four of these in the color Vapor. Just because I had more credit than I really needed for like one garment. So I thought I would try another color just to see what it's like in person. And this blue is so beautiful. My plan for the crepe is to do a Madeline sweater. I'll add a picture. But it's essentially a lace sweater. It's not super, super holy. I mean, you can see the picture because I'm going to put it there. But... I did buy the pattern and I looked at it and it's completely charted. It's completely charted and it's bottom up and lace charts have symbols and squiggles and all these things I've never seen before. So I'm gonna have to go to school and get another degree to knit this sweater and that's what's holding me up. I love the sweater, I think this yarn and this color specifically is going to be a hit like i just know it's gonna be so good it's gonna be so good but i have to find the patience and the time to learn how to read lace charts i haven't even been able to swatch it yet just because i looked at that chart and the legend like the little key that tells you what all the different symbols mean it's it's so long like it was just very overwhelming And I couldn't and I can't and I won't but I will I will and that's that on that my last acquisition is straight from the fleece of hotshot look at him I got this from island alpaca in Martha's Vineyard um, it's a little alpaca farm and you can go they have yarn like just from companies and stuff but they also have a few hanks of yarn from their alpacas that live on their farm so not only did i get to see on the label where it was from i actually got to go outside and see hotshot himself or herself I don't really know. I just thought this was fun. I thought it was a nice little souvenir. I did not get a sweater quantity because alpaca, again, drives me nuts. It's so itchy. But it was an alpaca farm. So I, I couldn't get wool. If you have suggestions on what I can do with 3.9 ounces of 100% alpaca 2-ply sport weight, approximately 275 yards, Please send them my way. I was thinking maybe if there was a pattern for like a little alpaca, like a amigurumi alpaca pattern, then I can make a hot shot out of hot shot. Is that weird? But I thought that could be really fun or I don't know, just something exciting. Not too boring, but not a garment either. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out. I had so much fun being back. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. I will post stuff. I will get better. And you will see me again. This was definitely a bit of a long one. I appreciate you so much for hanging out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.